Hello, Heart of the Lion Ministries. This is Evangelist Christian back with you again. The devil is a liar. I was trying to record another video and my stand actually broke, but I, I've managed to have it work at least this time um, uh, while I'm recording. It might work another time, but I'm thinking I'm going to have to get another one. Anyhow, I'm excited to be back with you again and to, to share another word. Um, I know I shared a, a few. Hopefully the sun, I hope the, uh, this is recording okay because once again, I'm at my happy place by the coast, except I cannot bring you outside because you would not be able to hear me and you would probably be distracted because uh, I would be <laughs> with the better scenery than looking at me. But um, anyhow, um, I had a few re pre-recorded, um, but I didn't record for a little bit. But uh, I think I've shared with this this with you guys before, but um, I'll share it again. I don't really record anything unless I feel really led that that's something I'm supposed to do. I'm not about showmanship uh, or performance because Christ is not about that. Uh, he did exactly as the scripture says, according to what he saw and heard the Father doing. That's what Messiah did. So we should try to live our lives the same way. And I was um, impressed on my heart um, this morning to share uh, this word with you about uh, repentance um, salvation and, and mercy. And, um, I'm actually in my car. I apologize. I'm hearing people. So I'm going to put this window up here. There we go. Sorry about that. I normally a little better prepared, but that was a small hiccup. Uh, but people are having fun out here by the coast. So I can't, uh, can't blame them, but that should be quiet. But what I wanted to, um, share was not just what is the gospel. What Christ put on my heart this morning is he knows what the wicked are thinking. God knows everything. He has the number of our hair, hairs numbered, the Bible says. Um, but uh, apparently, um, Yah, uh, Yahuwah, Yahushua, wants me to share what is on his heart and his mind because he knows what the wicked are thinking. But what he wanted me to share was this exact message as I will fill you in with the scripture. But what that message is, I have mercy on the wicked every day. So let's go ahead and start in 2 Peter 3, 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So what this word is reminding us, what it is saying to us, is that, the wicked say, where is God? Where is the proof of his existence? Even though it's all around us, even around me now, in the earth and so forth. Um, but God knows, Yahweh knows what is in our minds, what we're thinking, what we're saying at all times. And this is it right here. He's saying, many are saying the Lord is slack. Why isn't he returned like he said that he would? Well, Yahuwah gives us the answer right here. I am not slack. I am not slow. But the reason why he's holding off, even though everything is in synchrony with, um, yeah, it's synchronized with his perfect timing, no longer, no more. He's still holding off as long as possible because he wants as many people to come to salvation. What does that mean? The only reason why I was alive and why the wicked are alive. Those who don't know Christ, sorry, I mean, he loves you, but he doesn't want to leave you that way. He doesn't want to leave you with the judgment of the devil because the Bible says hell wasn't created for man, but for the devil and his angels. But we, we send ourselves there by rejecting his way out from what the devil has done to the world, to the earth, and to uh, mankind. But uh, anyhow, the reason why you're alive, those who don't know Christ, the reason why I was alive before I knew Christ was for one reason, and now has come to the saving knowledge of the Messiah, of Jesus Christ, Yahushua, because it's the most important decision we or you will ever make. It's not so we could become popular, um, though there's nothing wrong with success and, and doing your best in life and, and, and trying to be accomplished. But in the end, we know what the Bible talks about that, uh, about the, you know, 
the, the worlds and what they offer, especially as Satan tried to tempt Christ with the worlds to deviate from the plan of salvation. Um, overall, we are alive so we could come to repentance because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And what was he saving us from? And that's what I'm going to get to is... There, I know there's a debate of what he's saving us from and what that was all about. But let's go ahead and read now from that chapter into uh, Matthew. Let's go ahead and go there. Okay. And this was kind of the real scripture that I wanted to keep cornerstone, but I couldn't really start without starting that there. With that being said, mercy is given every day to those who wake up and take their, I wouldn't say their first breath, you're breathing through the night. I would say who open their eyes in the morning. Whether you know Christ or you don't know him, we don't open our eyes. We don't get up and our feet touch the ground unless he says so. You don't decide that. Sure, you got out of bed. Sure, you enjoy yourself and you do your things, but it's not happening. Unless he keeps that heart beating in your heart, he keeps those lungs working, and you open your eyes every morning. That is mercy. That is grace. And he's allowing that so you could come to the salvation, the grace of what his, his uh, suffering did at the cross of Calvary. Why? This is what he was uh, saving us from. Matthew 10, 28. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Both at the same time. I think there is a lot of confusion. And even in the Christian circles, there is, um, <clears throat> you know, different doctrines of, uh, you know, I don't want to call it splitting hairs because... Being away from Christ is just hell enough. But um, I know there's some you know, differences of, well, and I know I've heard this from unbelievers that they have the same view, honestly. Um, who cares? If I die, I die. That's it. And, and I go away. Well, see, Christ was warning about that. There's a difference between the death of the body and the soul. There's a separation of both. What he's saying here is, who cares if your body dies? Read that. Matthew 10, 28. Do not fear those who could just kill the body. Who cares if you could just die? What did I come for? What, what did I come for? Uh, for to, what, what am I saving you from? He says, rather fear him who is able to destroy soul and body in hell. There's a distinction. I know there's a, there's a view that the body and soul are together. And they live together and they die together and there's a soul sleep. And I, I don't really believe the Bible supports any type of soul sleep. Um, an annihilation of the consciousness of suffering. I believe the Bible is very clear in many scriptures that not only is the punishment eternal, so is the experience is eternal. Both of them. Not only... The punishment that you're just gone and that's an eternal punishment. No, you're conscious. Your conscience in your, co uh, um, what do you call it? Yeah, your conscience, uh, your consciousness, you are aware. And this is what Christ was separating. Who cares if your body just dies and that's it? That's what he's warning here. He's saying, don't fear him who could do that. Big deal. If you die, oh, well, you're gone. No, he's saying, destroy. Fear him who is able to fear the to destroy the body and the soul in hell. Because I don't want to turn this into a huge video, um, but there's many, many scriptures, especially in the red letters, that Christ warns of, of weeping and gnashing of teeth. That suffering is weeping and gnashing of teeth. I'm going to go to one Old Testament to, to give you that example, but you have the New Testament examples that Christ warns that there's weeping, there's gnashing of teeth. There is suffering. That's not just the body burning. There is grotesque, horrendous suffering because 
That's the sentence that was passed to Satan. The Bible is clear if you do your research as well. This, this sentence of hell was not man's sentence. That's Satan's sentence. So God doesn't send anybody to hell. Man sends himself to hell by rejecting the truth and embracing all these doctrines of error willingly. Because that's the first lie of, of the, that's the, they're just the lies of the devil that are recycled. Oh no, you will not die. You'll live. God is lying to you. And we see these philosophies and these heresies interweave through all the pagan and all the other religions and um, uh, things that are against Christ, that are contrary to the word of God, to the truth that he shared with us. And so, <clears throat> anyhow, there is real suffering there is real damnation, and that's what he came to save us from. And I'm going to give you one example in Isaiah 66. And if you look, read the whole chapter of 66. The whole chapter is verse 24, which I'm going to read only. But if you read the whole chapter, this is happening not only after the end times, but in the new heavens and the new earth. And that's why I'm going to start at verse 22. Isaiah 66, 22 through 24. For as the heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants in your name remain. And it shall come to pass from one new moon to another and one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. And listen to the context. This is after everything is said and done. Verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men. These aren't corpses that are gone. This is continuous. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the man who has transgressed me. For their worm does not die. Their worm. Not only them, not only their worm, but that worm and everything that's happening is not dying. It's in a constant state of death, is what it's saying. That's what it's saying. It's not contradicting itself or confusing itself. What it's saying is you're in a constant state of suffering, of death. Just like the righteous who actually made it into heaven are in a conscious, eternal state of life and bliss. So let's finish that. Verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who transgressed me, for their worm does not die, and the, their fire is not quenched, and they shall be an abhorrence to all flesh. Not only is the content of these scriptures clear, the contents of the chapter is clear that it, this is happening in as a continual thing for all people, believers, to see after the new heavens and the new earth. That's after the end times. Not only is it after the end times, this is after the new heavens and the new earth and the new moon and the Sabbaths are continually to be established. By the way, those are going to be honored in the end times, the new moon and the Sabbath. If I could throw that in there. But it's not really. It's in the scripture. So um, I could throw out a lot more word and that is good, but I don't want to confuse you. I think that's a good cornerstone of not only what hell is, but this is why Yah is being patient. It's for the wicked to turn because you know what? You don't want anything to do with eternal suffering because Christ made it very clear. Don't fear those who just kill the body. Oop. My phone started to fall, so I told you it broke. I'm not lying. I'm going to have to finish this with me holding this. And I was almost done. Um, oops. Uh, anyways, you know, with this scripture. And actually, I'm going to turn this like that just to finish this out. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like it just lasted just perfect timing because um, I was ready to wrap this up. So, but Matthew 10, 28 makes a clear distinction of the death process. That the soul and the body aren't one. There is a distinction. And the rest of the scripture makes it very clear. As it is above, so it is below for eternity. You're either going to enjoy eternal bliss or eternal hell and suffering. And this is why Christ is being patient. He doesn't want anyone to have the same sentence and judgment of Satan. Because that is Satan's sentence and it's just. He saw God. The reason why it's more fierce than you understand than you might think is fair 
is because this sentence is not made for human beings who's on here a short time. This sentence is for Satan, who saw God face to face, who was probably in charge of worship, who had no reason to sin, did not know what sin was. Self-caused, but not self-created, but self-caused by the arrogance and the pride of his own heart. Looking at himself, how wonderful he is. And that's the same lie that is circulating today in the lies of the different religions and New Age movement. That, oh, I will ascend and become and recycle and be my own God. Don't believe that garbage and that lie. Because it's the same one that started in the Garden of Eden. Where it says, surely you shall not die and you shall be like God. No, you shall not. You shall be your own God, but you shall not be like the Most High. And that is the good news. And that's why God is being patient. The good news is he came to deviate us and save us from the sentence of Satan. As he is trying to swallow up the whole earth with the same crime, evil, and wickedness that he fell to. So that's why I said earlier... God doesn't send anyone to hell. You send yourself because that sentence was originally for Satan and the fallen angels because they fell even before the Garden of Eden, obviously. But that is the truth also. So I hope that blessed you. God is being patient. If you know Christ, he's being patient so you can share the word. Yes, the, wor the, the, the world's getting worse as we see it. We're getting closer to the own times. The, the end times, things are getting very wicked. But still, God is being patient so we could throw that rope line out for that maybe that one in a million that might come to Christ. And it might be more than that. There might be a revival. Who knows? You never know what God will do. But judgment on the wicked, a lot of times, is revival for the righteous. As we see, a lot of things are being uncovered and unearthed in the whole earth and even the corruption in the whole earth and the nations and even the church. The, the, the governments and so forth so i pray that blessed you god is being patient because he doesn't take he doesn't rejoice in the death of the wicked and nor where they're going may we share the good news and if you don't know him invite him into your heart i could lead you through a prayer and you know what that's like but you know what it's not about the process it's about your genuinity of your heart you got to really mean it and just ask Yahushua, Messiah, to forgive you and to fill you with his spirit and to start afresh. And it will happen. And immediately you will be born again. And your name will be taken out of the book of death and written into the book of life. I pray that blessed you all. Until next time, take care.